Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today we'll take a look at everything that's brand new and what some people have missed with Samsung One UI 7 Beta 4. Now in this video, it's actually in a different order. I'll actually show you everything that's brand new first. Then we'll actually take a look at the change log to see what else was fixed, especially when it comes down to the bugs. We'll also take a look at the Samsung Galaxy Store because there's a lot of applications that have been updated within the last four days. And then also we'll take a look at the Samsung mobile security page so you can see everything that happened on the back end of things. So to start this video off, let's go with some good news and some actual news, something that is actually fact, nothing that's just kind of rumored on Twitter of people sharing that it's being delayed. The only information we ever got from Samsung is that the Samsung One UI 7 would be released during the first quarter of 2025, which is what we are currently in, which means it should be hopefully released sometime during February or March, because that is the first quarter of 2025. So here is the factual information from somebody who is a part of the India beta team. They are a moderator. It basically says, greetings from Samsung customer support. They want to inform you that the beta program is pretty much at its closure and One UI 7 stable update will be released very soon. Kindly stay active in the Samsung members application as you will be notified when it arrives to your device. And it just basically says thank you. So anytime you take a look at people on Twitter who are giving you some of those fear mongering type of clickbaity type stuff that everything is being delayed, but Samsung has never really talked about anything. And that's all it is, is rumors. All you have to do is stay with my channel, my Twitter, ask me some questions, and I'll let you know some of the stuff that is uh, actually fact and truth. Again, I have always stated from the beginning that we'll see Samsung One UI 7 during the first quarter of 2025, which is still 100% accurate and it's not delayed. So with that out of the way, let's head over into the camera because there's actually two major brand new features, a part of this update here for beta four. And that is the fact that you're able to do galaxy log and also some AI filters for your photos. Now, just so you know, if you're inside of the photo menu or the photo tab on the bottom, when you tap on this little four little dots, this takes you over into settings and it's going to take you to the very top of your camera settings because it starts at camera. Then it goes over into video. So if you head over into video, you tap on those four little dots, you head to settings. This is where you can find your video settings quicker rather than having to scroll down. So the first thing I want to show you is Galaxy Log. Now what will happen is that you will have to shoot it with the HEVC, which is high efficiency. It pretty much just kind of brings the size of the file down, but this file format is the most compatible. But you'll notice that the log is turned off. Now if you head back over into the HEVC, you'll see that log comes back in. Originally, it's only part of the pro video mode. If you tap there, you can actually have it on both video and pro video modes which means you don't have to go to pro video to find that that setting or feature. So right there, we're just a part of the video. You can see on the very top there is Galaxy Log. Now to give you a better example of this, we'll head over into the Galaxy S25 Ultra where I already have a bunch of videos like this. And I will let you know, the Galaxy Log is only a part of the Ultra. It is not a part of the S24 or the S24 Plus. Pretty much when you turn on your log, it's gonna you know kind of have everything a little bit more dull. It's going to allow you to give it a better color grade on it. You're not gonna have all of this overexposure and shining little light beams and things. So it'll be dull like this, but all you would have to do is once your video is shot, you're taking a look at it in your gallery, you swipe up, and this is where you have color correct. Once you tap on color correct, now it's going to correct everything for you, give you all of those vibrant colors. You're not gonna have any oversaturations in any portions, and it's just gonna look better. And you can also save this as a copy. So pretty much what will happen is you'll be able to have this as its own copy with the corrected color. But just remember that this one over here is shot in HEVC, which is not as compatible with everything. So what you can actually do is when you take a look at this video, when it is done, there is a setting on the top right that you can actually just transfer it over and save it as this file format. So if you have, for some reason, some program, some cloud service, some application, where if you shoot an HEVC that is not allowed everywhere, you'd be able to change it after the fact, change the format over to the H.264. And I can actually show you how you can do that right now. So if you ever run into that issue, all you have to do is just watch this video. So this right here is that brand new video that we just uh, pretty much saved a copy as. You can still see that it's HEVC. And if you try to upload this somewhere and you have any type of issues, you hit this edit button. And then on the very top right hand side, this is where you go to size and format. 
And then for this one on the very bottom, you can see the video codec and you can just change this over into the H.264 and then you just hit on done and you're still keeping it at the Ultra HD quality. So once you hit on save, it's changing the format so it's at the most compatible. And that is how if you shoot anything as log, you're able to move it over into the most compatible format file. So just as a little heads up. Now let's go back inside of the camera so I can show you the AI filter. So for this one, you go into photo, you tap this little four little squares there. As you swipe on over, you'll, you'll see this portion. And then this is for your filters. So this is where you can add in uh, a photo and it's gonna pull the colors from that and then create a filter for it. So pretty much you hit on this little plus button and then as you scroll on down, you just kind of find whatever you want. So this might have a little bit of like blue tint that'll happen. And then as you show it off to something else, uh, you'd be able to see what it would look like with that filter. So you can see between the color that was chosen from this photo is different than the original. And if I was to kind of swipe on over, you can kind of see slightly the changes with the filter. So pretty much as you're pointing it at whatever you want to take a picture of, you can change the color temp, you can change the contrast, uh, you know, right over here. Take a look at your saturation if you want to bring it down. Take a look at your film grain. Uh, so pretty much you'd also be able to press and hold on view original. So you can see which one is better and then you'd be able to take a picture if it is the best photo. So AI filter just pretty much will grab the color scheme off of a photo that you have in your gallery. Now the next change that you'll notice will be inside of your quick settings right here. So originally, I actually I took a screenshot of this to show you. You can see that I have two down over here. I also have my last played. Here's like my display, the quick settings, and I also have two sections up here, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth nearby devices and smart things. So what it looked like from before is if we go inside of here, we take a look at screenshots. So this is what we originally had. I only had two lines up over here. So we had Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, smart things, and smart view. We only had Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Now let's remember, smart things, smart view. So we only had smart things and smart view, which means the two things that are brand new is this, nearby devices, and modes. So if you like to use Samsung modes, you want to set up some modes. This is brand new now on the quick settings. And then you also have nearby devices. Nearby devices just means that you can connect to other nearby Samsung Galaxy devices or some of your devices that you have you know, signed in with your Samsung account. Uh, and you're just able to quickly get to them. So pretty much your, down, your devices will appear when they're nearby so you can connect to them quickly. Devices appear when they have Bluetooth turned on and they are signed in with your Samsung account uh, or you're connected to them from before. Uh, only Samsung uh, Galaxy devices and Samsung smart TVs and monitors are supported. Galaxy Buds must be removed from the case or case must be opened. So you just got to kind of open it up for you to connect again, via nearby devices. Now the next picture I wanna take a look at, this is another screenshot. So before the update, uh, it used to be called Smart Select. And now it is called AI Select. And pretty much, you know, it'll kind of do the exact same thing as before. They just kind of change the name. Uh, you're able to circle things around. Uh, you can make things your wallpaper. You can grab text from it and all that good stuff. Now here's the thing, if you highlight over something and originally it automatically starts going after like text, you'll see an icon that you can deselect text. So this way you'd be able to go through and actually change the size of this again. You might be going through this for the very first time. And when you first highlight over something, the whole selecting of text might be the first thing that is there. And you'll notice that you can't change the size of your select. Just unselect it, which normally would only look like this there where it's highlighted for the first time. And once you deselect that text option, it gives you the ability for you to change the size of your basically your quick select. Another cool feature that they added in is the ability of sharing folders. So if you go inside of your settings and then you go down to connected devices, uh, one thing that is brand new is this storage share. Before this update, which was beta three, it did not have this ability. So you're able to allow your Samsung TV or Galaxy Book to access and use the files and folders on this phone. For storage share to work, both devices need to be or need to have Wi-Fi on, Bluetooth and storage share turned on. And then it basically kind of shows you how you can do it. So once you have your other devices connected, as said, then you're able to share your devices between this device and either your Samsung TV or Galaxy Book. Now, with the next change, this one's a little bit smaller, but you'll be able to notice it right up over there as the charging icon. So one of the first things I noticed is that it actually popped up slightly quicker 
and it's a little bit more fluid of a animation. If you try to compare it versus Beta 3, Beta 3 was okay. It was pretty close to this, but this one is slightly smoother and a little bit more snappier when it comes down to actually showing the animation going through. Now, the next change that I believe has happened, and some of you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I wasn't fully able to test it because on Beta 3, I had the APK version of Home Up from Goodlock. And now that Home Up is actually a part of Goodlock and it has its latest update, it's physically there, officially released. So Home Up is sitting there. This is where you can make a bunch of changes with your task changer, your home screen, and your uh, edge panels, and all your animations. Pretty much what I was able to do in Beta 3 is I believe what now people can do on Beta 4, which is you press and hold anywhere that's empty, you go to your settings, and on the very bottom is where you have more customizations, and this is basically your Home Up. So beforehand, maybe you didn't see the more, um, you know, more customizations. So again, press and hold settings on the very bottom. If you didn't see this before, let's say on beta three and you downloaded the official release of home up now in beta four, it's just sitting there, but I can't fully test it to say if it's true or not, because again, as I said from before, I had the APK version before it was formally already out and mine was already there. Now this next feature is one that is hidden, but I've shared it in a past video somewhere along the lines of Samsung One UI 7. Maybe it was like the hidden features. I went inside of the settings of the gallery and on the very bottom, if you go inside of about gallery and you tap on version like seven or eight times, you'll unlock gallery labs. So it gives you additional features that you can do and test. And pretty much one of the things I've shown off from before is that you're able to open up in a new viewer, uh, basically in another window. So you can do it as like a, an image or, or video. So pretty much what that means is that, let's say that I take this little image that's right here on the bottom right hand side, if let's say that I wanted to edit this photo and I wanted to see which one was better, or I wanted to test different filters on a couple different photos at the exact same time, I can open it in other window. So now here's the original. And then up over here, I can make all of my changes. I can go through the edits. I can do my AR filter type or AI filter type stuff. I can change contrast, saturation, all the beautiful stuff, completely compare it right down here with the original. Uh, or if I wanted to, I could try a few different filters up over here, change, you know, make a few changes, and then also do different changes over here to figure out which one I think is best, where I'm pretty much editing the same photo at the exact same time uh, in two different ways. That's one of the features that is now a part of this beta four. Now it was kind of a part of beta three, but it didn't work correctly. Even though I turned it on, it never popped up in another window. And I said in that video that it just doesn't work and I don't really know exactly what it's for. So now that we took a look at everything that's brand new, now let's take a look to see if I can find any new versions of applications, which honestly, to tell you the truth, all of these should have updates because there's new features with it. So we'll take a look at your Samsung home, but I do this over a little bit of OCD because I want to see exactly what is the brand new version so I can take a look at it in future videos. So pretty much before the update, Samsung One UI Home was at 16.0.0.3.2.1. It is now at 16.0.0.5.7. So clearly a brand new version of Samsung Home. We'll also take a look at camera. There should be a new version here too because there is brand new features uh, that we were able to show off in this video. Before the update was 15.0.0.2.5. It is now 15.0.0216. So again, new version of the Samsung camera, which we just noticed. We'll also take a look at Samsung Gallery. Again, there should be a new version of this one because there is also new features a part of it. Before the update was 15.6.0.0.61. It is now 15.6.0.1.9. So clearly a new version there. And then the last one I want to take a look at is My File. So I don't know for sure if there is a new version here. I mean, maybe there is, but we'll see. Before the update was 15.2.0.1. 81. This is now 15.2.0.1.8.6. So we have a new version of my files as well. So if there's any problems that was there from before, they are now fixed. Maybe, maybe along the lines of like searching for files and such. And now for the changelog information. So this one is giving you that software version of Samsung One UI 7 Beta 4 that ends with ZYBA. Now, as we've covered in this video, it adds in the AI filter in the camera, also adds in the log function and camera for the S24 Ultra only. Now, there are several bugs that have been fixed, and so it fixed the lock screen, always on display UI error, the shortcut widget screen error, etc. They also fixed the quick panel UI error, so it could have been maybe blank or screen overlap and more. They fixed the issue that the status bar disappears from the home screen. Fix the unnatural animation when opening and closing recent applications. Fix blank issue in the status bar after installing Goodlock Quickstar. 
fix grouping alarm error, and improved buckling when releasing fingerprints. So when you tried to unlock your phone and you're using the fingerprint reader, if it was having any issues or little, uh, little stutters, pretty much all of that has been fixed. Now down over here, you'd be able to take a look at more of the information. And this one is at the size of 1,393 megabytes. So pretty much 1,400 megabytes. And it gives you the security patch of February 1st. Now I've covered the February update for Samsung, but I can also cover it again for this video. So I can show you later on the Samsung mobile security page. Now let's go inside of the Samsung Galaxy Store because sometimes with monthly updates or big updates like this one, uh, they might not do updates for applications, but they put them inside of here. Or maybe you haven't looked inside your Galaxy Store for like four days or a week, and you'll actually notice that there is some updates sitting inside of there for some applications and services. So right now there is 11. Now this one's not my main daily driver device, so I don't know exactly when exactly all these came. I did take a look at a few, and this one was one that was one of the oldest, which was like January 20th, which means that I haven't updated that one since like January 20th. But some of the other ones that I took a look at was like February 11th. I saw one that was February 20th, one that was February 18th. So always take a look inside of your updates right there, uh, inside of the Galaxy Store, because maybe there, should, there could have been something put in there within the last few days that you didn't notice. And now to finish off this video, let's take a look at the Samsung mobile security page. I've already covered this in a past video. A little bit earlier on, I talked about the Samsung February update, and that's what we're going to cover right now. So we are go inside of this one. It's going to give us the details from Google and Samsung on what was you know, part of this update here on the back end of things. So sometimes when I can't find anything that's brand new, this is where pretty much all the new stuff is. So we'll take a look at the notes from Samsung. And from what I wrote down from earlier for this February update, we have uh, 34 updates from Google. One of them is critical and 33 is high. Now the update you know, from Samsung, so this is the Samsung uh, vulnerabilities and exposures. Pretty much for this one, what I wrote down is that there was seven updates, but there was four that they were, that they were allowed to show. So pretty much I was able to see this one, two, three, four, and that was pretty much it. So for the other three things that was updated from Samsung, we don't know exactly what it is, but here you can kind of find a little bit of information, you know, local privileged attackers to disable Samsung find. There's a patch for that. Uh, there was the release one, local attackers to enable ADB, something for write out of bounds memory. Uh, so there's a few things that was from Samsung, but again, there were seven updates, but they only showed four. So there's three that we don't know again, there was seven from Samsung. That's pretty much everything for this video. It literally covered every single thing from all the bugs fixed to what is new for the February patch. Uh, we also took a look at everything that's new with this update from beta three over into beta four and covered a few things that some other channels and bloggers forgot to also talk about. And I kind of condensed everything, my guess, into just one video of everything that is brand new and changed uh, with this beta four update. So hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You can subscribe right over here on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.